In this episode of Ask an Artist, we have Jordi Vandeput of Cinecom.net. Jordi was one of the few people posting about filmmaking on YouTube all the way back in 2006. Since then, the Cinecom YouTube channel has absolutely exploded and currently sits at over 2.25 million YouTube subscribers, all learning about filmmaking. You can find links to everything discussed in this episode in the show notes below or at actionvfx.com slash podcast. So let's jump right into the episode. Hey everybody, Luke Thompson from Action VFX with another episode of Ask an Artist. Um, extremely excited about today's episode. I'm joined by Jordi Vandeput of Cinecom.net. What's up, Jordi? Welcome to the show, man. What's up, Luke? Thank you so much for inviting me here. I'm super excited. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really excited uh, to jump into this conversation and uh, just kind of learn more about you, learn more about uh, the really cool stuff you're, you guys are doing at Cinecom. So yeah. let's jump right in. Yeah, all right. I'll briefly introduce myself, I guess. So for those who don't know us yet, uh, we have a tutorial channel on YouTube where we mostly explain how VFX is done. We do that through a series called Copycat, where we look at existing uh, visual effects from films or music videos, and then we try to recreate that and explain the audience how it's done. We also do like general camera lighting tutorials, etc. And that's where we build our audience and uh, mm -hmm. do our work on. Yeah, I'm, I'm always like so, I don't know if surprise is the word. I guess surprise is a good word. It just like the freshness of your content as well. It's like always just moves along really well, especially for that to be like, you know, a training educational component. I feel like you guys always have a really fresh approach to recreating an effect and oh, keeping you. everything fun and interactive. Uh, so definitely great job on that. And it shows obviously in, you know, the audience you guys have been able to build over the years, which is massive. <laughs> I think last I checked, you guys are pushing 2.2 uh, million subscribers yeah, on your YouTube channel. That. Yeah. So that is no small feat at all. So <laughs> congrats on that. Thank and you so much. Thank you. Well on your way to, to 3 million, yeah, which who is knows? insane. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, so it's cool. going well. Yeah. Cool. So Jordy, kind of jumping into our main question, you know, ask an artist. Usually what we'll do is we'll have one primary question for the episode uh, for each guest, and then we'll kind of unpack some different things from that. So your question for today, sir, is going to be, how do you stay on the cutting edge? And I know that can kind of take a few different routes, but this kind of goes with, you know, you being an educator in the space, you know, having done tutorials myself, I can definitely tell you that that can get pretty draining and you have to have some really good creative processes for not getting burnt out immediately. So Jordy, how do you stay on the cutting edge with that? And feel free to take that question wherever you want. Yeah, all right. Well, I, I began making tutorials on YouTube in the very early days. I remember one of the being one of the first Premiere Pro tutorial uploaders on the platform. Nice. So awesome. I was just being on the cutting edge by just being the first. At that time, I didn't know that it was, that, or that it could have potential, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think the first like seven years or something of the channel was just me uploading whenever I would like to, which was like a couple of yeah. times a year. And suddenly I, we, we had, or I had 50,000 subscribers and I didn't realize what that meant. Um, mm -hmm. But I thought by myself, you know, let, let's give it a shot. Let's try and just upload once a week, but keep it as a hobby. You know, we're not going to yeah. invest too much time into <laughs> this. It, it's still scary. Yep. And at that time, YouTube began to grow a lot more. We would see a lot more channels popping up, making tutorials as well. And suddenly we realized that it wasn't anymore about being first because we're not first anymore. We know there's so many channels now. We have to mm -hmm. start coming up with good ideas as well. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> and it, that, that is really hard. It's really hard to come up with, with, with good ideas. Sometimes I, I follow these, these creators on uh, Instagram, for instance, and I'm mm -hmm. always thinking like, how, where do they get their ideas? Like, this is so good. I would never <laughs> come up with these things. So for us, what really helped was to actually work in trends. So we would literally mm -hmm. go to YouTube, the trending page, and just look at the new music videos, the new trailers yeah, for, yeah. for movies which are coming out, or just go to the cinema and just see which kind of effects that we would see there, if we could mm -hmm. recreate something from there. And that allows us to be first again. You know, when a trend comes yeah. out, we would be the first one to hop onto it. And that allows us to stay on that cutting edge. I wouldn't per se say that what we do exactly is so cutting edge, but I do 
think that the way that, that we're bringing it is is different. And I'm, I'm always trying to do mm -hmm. it in that way, like being different in in not only trying to recreate an effect, but also trying to like build the whole set around it. You know, just, just yeah. to give you guys an idea for an effect from Billie Eilish, uh, where she is like, or, or, where, where she has these black tears coming out of her mm -hmm. eyes. And we would not just do that, no, but we would also like create that whole, that, that white set. I would wear white clothes. I even painted my, my hair blue at, at, at the time to get in yeah. that, that whole, you know, that whole atmosphere, that, that, that whole yep. vibe of Billie Eilish, you know, which has nothing That's to great. do with, with the effect itself. But, <laughs> you know, it just makes it different, I guess. Yeah, yeah it does. And, and that like all those details add, you know, for the educational content because it's just building the atmosphere yeah, and yeah, exactly. similar to like world building. That's, that's what you're doing for that shot, which is really yeah, cool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's in an essence what we're trying to, but it, it stays really hard. It stays really hard because we've mm -hmm. noticed that since the Corona, um, there hasn't been coming out many music videos and definitely not music videos where there were effects present in. Like we had a time where, where like every single day we saw new mu music videos uh, with, with, with exciting effects in. And yeah. now we're just waiting on being like, where are those effects? And we're, we have to go back to old films or to Marvel films or something to, to find ideas. So it's really hard. We're very dependent on those trends. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah. And I, I didn't really consider that too much. But thankfully now, like coming out of pandemic days, like a lot of stuff has been greenlit. And so I know for us, it's like our clients are just absolutely like go, go, go. Like <laughs> everything we've had has been greenlit, which is great. Everybody's just trying to keep up, but I'd never even thought, you know, for you guys kind of paralleling the types of content and being able to pull, as you mentioned from like the trending section, which I think yeah. is a great idea of being able to consistently see what's popular. Like, yeah, I would imagine that would have been a little scary for you guys. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. And, and of course, when you try to come up with a new idea, uh, I, I've, I've been doing that, that as well uh, by just mm -hmm. making random tutorial videos. But it's hard. Yeah. It's really hard. So sometimes I think like, okay, I, I, I invented something, a, a cool new trend here, but it doesn't get picked up. Yeah. And, and then you make another random video and suddenly that does get picked up <laughs> and you have no idea why. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's so, funny how like, timing and when people receive things and like obviously the the random number generators the the algorithms and yeah, everything exactly that, yeah that puppeteer everything uh yeah, yeah. have some say but yeah that's that's really cool could you kind of like give us a little more backstory about like you know you mentioned cinecom as it started early days just you flying solo how did i guess even those earlier days was there like a specific transition point where you kind of started to see things pick up like maybe more starkly than previously or was it just kind of this gradual thing where you just slowly started bringing on team members well i started out as a freelance cameraman uh, mostly mm -hmm. doing corporate films commercials very local stuff so i was kind of like 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 i say that like getting pushed into uh every hour you you work you need to get paid you know that mm -hmm. mentality i would go to yeah. these network events to talk to other business or managers etc to to sell my product to and yeah. I, I definitely didn't like that but i realized that it was just part of you know of the industry you know you need mm -hmm. to be a seller as well you know yep. and you're not only a cameraman you're also a manager i mean yeah. you need to and a marketer sell your own product yeah yeah, yeah you've got to got to market yourself yep exactly Super exactly important. So um, that was for me important. And uh, when I then started doing you or, or take YouTube more serious by just saying, let's do it one day a week, I was usually doing that on a Saturday because it just kind of mm -hmm. felt wrong to spend time in something and not getting paid for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but by, by actually by doing that, by, by spending or, or by, by uploading at least one video a week, by doing that, I was getting more and more views. I was building, building up a, a stronger core audience. And at a certain moment, someone con contacted me and told me, like, uh, you are monetizing your channel, right? I was like, no. I mean, is that possible? <laughs> and That's he awesome. brought me, yeah, it, it's, it, I, I found it really strange. Uh, maybe a fun side story here, but uh, I was once uh, banned from Google AdSense. And for some unknown reason, I uh, was oh, never, never being able to, to contact uh, YouTube about it. And uh, so I kind of give up there, gave up because yeah. I thought I would never get income from, from the AdSense. So I'm just doing mm -hmm. this all for free. 
but then I did did found a way to fix that. But yeah, so <laughs> it was a what, scary time. what year was this? Or uh, I mean, like just even time like, frame because you mentioned early days. You know, you yeah, were one of the earlier uh, that creators was, for that. I started uploading around 2006 or something, 2005, 2006, and I think around yeah. 2009 or somewhere, the Google account got got banned for some reason that is still oh, unknown man. today. <laughs> and so I copyright upload. music strikes. Yeah, that's I'm what not that's sure what always what gets it me. It's like random stuff that goes yeah. back through, and yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's the automatic <laughs> system. It's 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 stupid, but <laughs> so. <laughs> And I think that around in 2000, I don't know, like like 13 or 14, I found a mm -hmm. way on a blog post on how to get get around that and to kind of like like move your channel over to a different account where I wasn't yeah. banned on. So yeah, I did yeah. that, and I was like, nice. Hey, I, maybe I should do some more with YouTube <laughs> now. Now that I can earn, and I was making like 20 bucks a month. I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, it beats zero a month. Yeah, right? it is. Like... It is, and and it shows that that there is a way to earn money on YouTube. And, mm -hmm. you know, some might say that, you know, you don't have to do it for the money, you'd have to do it out of passion. But if you want to do it full time and put all of your passion into it, you need to find a way to, right. to, you know, make a living off from it to earn yeah. some money. That was an important factor for me. So yeah. that's I mean, that's huge. I think a lot of people, a lot of people that are maybe a little more apprehensive to just jump right in, and like maybe they've wanted to start a YouTube channel or, or whatever. And it's like they don't really, at least from my experience talking with people, I know a lot of people will kind of not see an option that you can side hustle for a little bit. You know, it's like I either have this full time job and then I just have to jump in with two feet or it's like there's no in between when in an actuality you can, you know, if you have a day job, as you mentioned, even like working yeah. on the weekends or kind of like. You may have to miss out on watching some movies with your friends or. Yeah going exactly. to dinner it's like but yeah. that's that's how you can more safely like mitigate risk and see hey is this a viable thing because yeah it's not it's not like everyone thinks it is where it's like you just jump in and it's like oh my gosh you have 2.2 million youtube subscribers like you're you're so famous that's that's not how it works you know it's no, like exactly. you mentioned yeah. years like 2005 2006 is when yeah. this journey started and yeah so that's that's cool. I think that's something uh, that could be encouraging to people to hear for like side hustle for a little bit. Yeah, definitely, um, definitely. And see it as a, as a hobby where you would go on a set Saturday to, I don't know, like football practice, you know, mm -hmm. just make YouTube videos and ask your friends, make it fun. That is yep. important. Make it fun. Enjoy it and treat it as a hobby and just see where it takes it from, from there. If you find the opportunity to monetize your channel more, then great. Maybe you can go work half time. That's how mm -hmm. I kind of did it. I mean, I was working independent, but I was, I always say that laying off clients, like like mm -hmm. ignoring them or uh, like, like <laughs> book, booking, less, booking less clients. I'm always yeah, looking yeah, for yeah. the English words. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> booking less clients. Uh, so I was actually working halftime suddenly mm -hmm. and then doing halftime YouTube and then slowly took over. Yeah. So uh, that's, that's how it happened. That's really cool. So how many employees are you guys at right now? Uh, right now, four. Four, man. Yeah. That's insane that you guys are able to play at the level and the caliber of like content because it is extremely consistent. I know you have some set days of the week that like certain types of videos are going to be out. And for people, man, that is that is some extremely high output coming from I I know what it's like uh, to try to hit those consistent things. And our current business is a little different. You know, we're very like product centric as well and so yeah. we've got to have like a couple different sub teams that have some more specializations but even the content side alone i mean you guys do extremely well for only having four people yeah yeah it's going pretty good yeah i do have to mention that that creating content con consumes the most time i think it's not it, it's i don't think that the time spent is really fair with the with the revenue <laughs> that, that yeah. we're getting <laughs> we're putting way too much time in 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 creating stuff because we also have other revenue streams, so mm -hmm. uh, and we're, we're putting all the time in. It's, it's not really, it's not, it's not really fair. But you know, we we love it. We're all creatives here, so we also mm -hmm. want to spend our, or or try our best to make the best possible thing. So yeah, <laughs> and as long as we can do this, we can we can keep doing it, and uh, we'll see where we end up. That's awesome. Yeah. So where do you kind of see you guys going? You know, in the next five, ten years, are you wanting to kind of grow the team? Where you're at, I'm sure you have a couple of different like strategies as far as things you want to do, 
Do you want to do feature work, make your own movies? What do you, what do you want to do? That's a question that many people ask me, and I always have trouble answering that. <laughs> me too. I, I hate that question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it started out when I when I started as a freelancer, and I was talking to other business owners, etc. They would also ask, like, do you have like a goal and five years a, mm-hmm. a, a trajectory to it and all? And I was like, should I have that? Okay, okay. <laughs> and I would start thinking about that. I uh, want to be alive. When, I want to have a I, home. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, but it is. In the, in the beginning, you just want to have work, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah. I think when when the YouTube channel started off, and I saw potential doing this full time, I did set up a goal for myself. It wasn't really a, a time goal, but just like I want to reach that. For me, that was having my own studio and having a small team. Mm-hmm. And I, I realized that I've, I've reached all of those goals at the moment. Yeah. And I don't know where to go next, honestly. I, I feel like I've reached my goal and this is good. If we can keep doing mm-hmm. this, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. Yeah. So I mean, only in terms of, of content itself, I do want to try and get more into the, the fiction film. Like shorts may be feature, but I think that's way off. Uh, but that is something that I'm trying to do now as well, like doing that more as a hobby, like mm-hmm. like on the site, making short films because yeah. there's no budget for it at the moment. And we'll see where that takes itself off. Yeah, that's that's awesome. And I mean, even for short films, though, like budgets can like they can be black holes of, you know, even. Yeah, like I, I, I know we had Ryan Connolly on the podcast as well, and he was yeah. kind of talking about some of the budgets for their shorts that they have. Yeah, And I'm like. Holy cow. <laughs> like, yeah, that's insane. That is that is definitely no small thing. And yeah. same as features, you know, it's like people are wanting to have the right sponsorships and advertisements and they're expecting something back. And so that's something that you have to deliver on. And there's just so many different factors that comes into that. And it's not just like people hand you money and then you can do whatever you want. Like that's yeah. not unfortunately yeah. how that works yeah. it's, it's um, just really scary because you make a product first where you invest so much money into mm-hmm. and then the sale starts it's yep. not like doing like a, a commercial or something where the client mm-hmm. pays you first or, or after it doesn't matter but you have like a price quote you know what you're going to earn you know yep yeah, it's yeah, way yeah. different and it's scary and definitely yeah. if we're talking about the, the big budgets that ryan are doing you know it's 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 insane yeah yeah, yeah for sure so yeah there's there's a lot in that. Like, I know, uh, notice you guys are kind of like taking some more, I say traditional. It's traditional now. It wasn't traditional 10 years ago. Traditional route, like with courses, educational content, like some more structured things, maybe with like certifications and like Skillshare types of classes. Are you guys looking at doing more of that in the future, kind of keeping those things going as well? Um, yeah, that's something that we've been doing for since the very beginning because mm-hmm. I saw more potential in that yeah and then youtube first but mm-hmm. then i realized that i need an audience to sell my courses to right so yeah, I yeah. Need YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> but um i i that's something that I mean, we, we try to put out like at least two courses a year mm-hmm. we, we can't put out more or i, I also don't want to because I, I do think that our courses are very different from other courses mm-hmm. we spend a lot of time in producing a qualitative course and something that is different. You know, just, just to give an, an, an example for our After Effects course, I was actually dressed up as a professor in my laboratory and I would do all of these uh, experiments and sometimes something would explode. And yep. then we would explain how to do that explosion in After Effects, you know? <laughs> uh, I love it. I love it. That's so, so cool. Uh, it's it's uh, way different. But. Yeah. Anytime I think of uh, like lab coat stuff, because like being on set, I have so many pairs of clothes that have just like they're covered in green screen paint or like fake blood or (laughs) like I have hats that are ruined that will probably be on a shelf somewhere for the rest of (laughs) for the rest of my life maybe one day they'll go in a museum uh after I'm dead (laughs) we'll see but uh I always think of the slow-mo guys and their like lab coats that they have of just like man what a piece of like internet memorabilia yeah Uh, (laughs) it is kind of thing (laughs) that's great so Switching gears a little bit, you know, obviously you are very entrepreneurial, like even just talking with you now, like I can see that you're passionate about what you do, but money has to be made so that things can continue so that you can pay your four team members that you have, that you can grow, have all sorts of different budgets. How do you kind of balance that entrepreneurial spirit mindset with 
the creative side of running a company? Like, do you find that those things kind of clash? Do they complement each other? What do you What do you think about that? I think that I'm I'm not the greatest businessman, honestly. <laughs> I uh, <laughs> me either. <laughs> I make a lot of costs that that should not have been made but it's 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 we just i just buy those stuff because i think we can make a nice video with it or something mm -hmm. so so I like think the, the creative it's, it's, side I think it's a kind problem of yeah supersedes the entrepreneurial yeah i think it's, it's a problem with every freelancer you know if they see yeah. a new camera they just want that camera not that the <laughs> client cares they just want the yeah. camera you know <laughs> it's 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 a problem we all have but that's, that's definitely something I, I think I, I try to keep it very, very loose here. I think everything is possible as long as there is a revenue and we can pay for everything, then mm -hmm. we can do whatever we want. And that's how I'm trying to do it. And I, I put uh, quality a lot more above sales, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like um, like with our courses, I, could, I mean, I, I could... I could make more money with the courses, I think, if I would just make it a tighter, simpler and make, you know, 10 courses a year, mm -hmm. you know, just to just say my speech and sell it. You know, those courses would sell more and then et cetera. Yeah. But that's not what I creatively want. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that I'm very fortunate to say that everything kind of fell into places for me. I was very lucky, I think, with the YouTube al al algorithm, just sharing our content across the platform. Mm -hmm. If that wasn't didn't happen, then none of this was possible here. So I think that I was just very lucky there uh, and very fortunate because I'm not the greatest businessman. <laughs> definitely not. You, you say lucky, but there's definitely some skill behind there. And like, I'll, yeah, we were trying I'll, our best. I'll say that. I'll say that if you won't, because you're humble. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. Yeah, and anytime I see... It's just always great, like, because I'll see some YouTube homepage, whatever, like I'm logging in, signing into an account, and it's like, hey, new Cinecom video just got kicked up, and it's like I can tell everything that's happening on the back end, and I'm just like, man, good for those guys. Like, I'm so happy for you. <laughs> uh, every time I no, see one of your videos just, like, kicking up and uh, people sharing it around and all the excited stuff, so well-deserved. You guys definitely know what you're doing. Thank you. So what are some of the things you guys have coming up as far as Cinecom? I know, you know, obviously course things are going to keep continuing. Any specific content might be fun to mention? Maybe tools? Yeah. Um, a short film, Ooh. actually. Yeah. Nice. Uh, we're doing every year a partnership with Adobe. Mm -hmm. where, and this is one of the best things. They give, they give us a budget. We can make a short film. Doesn't matter what. We just have to make four tutorials from that short film delivered them to them, they will upload it to their channel. Yeah. That's that's the format. That is a nice and deal. The, the only problem is they always come like one month ahead. Like in a month, they need a short film. Oh, man. I'm always like, okay. <laughs> yeah, let's just pause every single thing we have going on yeah, right now. To, yeah, yeah. To so, that, yeah, we can do that. So it's going to be weekend work now yeah. for this month. Man. But... Uh, so it, is, is there a rough timeline on when you're hoping those will, those tutorials will start rolling out or the film will be done? Yeah, uh, the deadline is August. I think okay. August, at the last, you know, the first week of August is the deadline. Mm -hmm. So at that point, everything should be out, yeah. both the film and the tutorials. Nice. That's awesome. Is the short film going to be hosted on your channel? Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. It will. Yeah. yeah. Definitely looking forward to so, checking that out. Is it? Do you know, like, theme-wise, it's going to be, like, sci-fi, action? Yeah, the scenario is done. I called the actor today. It's yeah. a great actor. And so we're just looking for dates now to for the production. Mm -hmm. It's sci-fi in a way, but not the typical sci-fi with, with holograms and everything. Mm -hmm. It's more like, uh, like this is possible in a near-future sci-fi. Yeah. If it makes sense. All right, so here are the spoilers. Uh, now, first, guys, make sure to watch it. And yes. Come back to the podcast. Yes. Else you're spoiled. Pause. But, uh, pause this episode. Pause. And go away. <laughs> the first time I've ever told an audience. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it's a story about a guy um, trapped in a trunk, and uh, he tries to make contact with the driver, but he's not responding. Suddenly, the the car stops. The driver gets out. You're just all hearing that from the trunk, and he hears a phone call. And it's like, but he can't hear the phone call. So he opens up the trunk, he gets out, he finds a rock on the floor, and the driver doesn't seem to realize it because he's with his back to the car, so he's mm -hmm. on the phone. And he crawls to him, and he knocks the driver out. He falls on the ground, and he's like, well, what's happening? Like, why did I wake up in the trunk? Like, he doesn't know what's happening. He turns around the driver, and it seems to be a clone. It's himself. 
Ooh. So uh, and he's like, what? You know, okay. He doesn't know what to do. So he just picks up the body, puts it in the, in the trunk. He, he ends the phone call as well. He gets in the car and he just starts driving. And then he finds a business card with information about himself. And he seems to be a volunteer in a clinical, a cl clinical research lab with a photo is, of uh, him. And on the back, there's a phone number. And he thinks to himself, like, what is this? What's going on? So he pulls over. He gets out of the car. He calls the number. He walks behind the car and he starts calling. And he can't see it, but in the back, someone or his clone is stepping out of the trunk. And you can see where I'm going now. He knocks him out. Uh, the end. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. I like it yeah, a lot. That's, and in the phone call, you hear some more information, but I'll leave that mm -hmm. as uh, for those who are going to watch the film. Yeah, that's really cool. So, so tutorial-wise, what kind of aspects are... You mentioned four different tutorials for Adobe. What kind of content will those things cover? Well, uh, the cloning aspect, of course. Nice. And I want to try to do something advanced, and I'm not entirely sure yet what to do. Mm -hmm. Of course, you got the very typical, like the rotoscoping out or the masking out, and, yeah. and you, have, you, have, you have two of the same characters in the, in the, in the shot. But I want to try to make physical contact with his clone. So mm -hmm. where, he, where he grabs the body and turns it over, in a, in a two shot. So you see both the characters. I don't know yet how, nice. but we're gonna test that first and yeah. try different things. That'll be really That's cool. one of the tutorials. Yeah. Nice, I'm extremely excited to check those out. Like I think I think those, those will be really fun and it'll be cool to kind of peel the curtain back a little bit and see how you guys approach those different aspects. Cause those can be some pretty, cloning can be some pretty complex visual yeah. effects if, if done right. And even if done wrong, it's super hard. So yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, really. Yeah. Looking forward to checking that out and uh, that short film as well. So if you're a listener, definitely go check out that short film uh, over on the Cinecom YouTube channel. Jordy, where else can people find out about you? Uh, Instagram, Twitter, Instagram, any, anything yeah. you prefer? Uh, I do have a Twitter account, but I'm not too active on it. Mostly Instagram, I think. Okay. We're always making stories of the behind the scenes. So every time that we're putting up sets or doing stupid stuff, you'll you'll, you'll see that happening in, in the stories nice. mostly. So cool. Instagram. So Cinecom Instagram, and you have a personal one as well. People can follow you. I I do have a personal, but I never post on it. Okay. So I don't think it's 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 worth following me there. Stri just go to the Cinecom business. team channel. I like it. I like it. No, it's not business, <laughs> but it's just I'm, it's actually funny. But I'm not really into social media. Yeah. Actually, I'm, I'm just doing it for, for my job. But when I'm at home, I'm never on stuff like Facebook or Instagram. Yep. I, I don't do that. Yeah, it's it's such a weird, like, necessary component, especially of what we do, you know, of like, because even like YouTube is technically considered social media now when it comes to all of the different avenues that they've uploaded for community boards and yeah. and all of that. So it's uh, it's for sure a necessary component. Um, yeah, and it feels like like a shore. It really is like yeah. the shorts and the stories and the community posts. It's like, yep. oh, they have another, another another function now. Yeah, I know. And we have to do that as well. <laughs> yes, we have to. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's funny how like being able to utilize any new like stories function on YouTube. You know, that's just an easy example. It's like even using that, they immediately prioritize that content of where it's being displayed yeah. because they're like, hey, yeah. everyone's using our new features. Look at this. So yeah, we, we always try to lean into those new tools as best we can, uh, even if we're kind of just playing around to see if and when we'll ever use them for anything. Yeah. Awesome. So Jordy, I'll definitely include those links in our show notes as well. And yeah, thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Ask an Artist. It's been really cool. Uh, I know this is the first time you and I have actually got to chat face to face. So it's been really cool to hear more about like your journey starting Cinecom and man, just the huge explosive growth that it's turned into so thank you so much for joining us on this episode of ask an artist we will definitely keep in touch and i'm really excited to see where you guys uh, take it next with your channel courses and all the content you've got coming up thank you so much it was a real pleasure being here and talking with you and uh yeah i'm looking forward to the other podcast as well myself <laughs> yes sir thanks so much jordy yeah thank you so much bye